Hi again, Kim here with Turning Ground Yoga, and I'm so happy to be back with you for another segment of Yoga for Knitters. Today, our practice is all about the hips, and we are going to be using a few props. So if you happen to have one of these, or two actually, two of these skeins of doesn't matter really what, but just something squishy and yarny and woolly and good, grab them. We're also going to be using either one of these little balls or one of these little friendly friendly guys. This is one of my woolen um, dryer balls. I'm sure you probably have them too. So our practice is all about opening up the hips, which is a wonderful break to take while you're knitting. You know, you get a little sore, you get a little stiff. We do a lot of sitting when we're knitting. So some muscles get overused and some muscles get way too relaxed and they get out of balance. So the overused ones pull, the relaxed ones get pulled, and we get a little sore. So this practice is going to reset all of that. It's gonna loosen up the tight ones. It's gonna stimulate the loose ones, and you're gonna be able to sit and knit a little bit longer. So whenever you're feeling tight, use this practice. I'm sure it will help. We're going to begin with our two skeins, the squishiest, less dense version of a prop. So take your skeins of wool, place them in front of you, come to all fours. We're going to do cat cow, but we're going to do cat cow with our wrists in mind to give them a little support and a little love. So place your palm on the skein of wool and let your fingers fall onto the floor. So the weight is now a little bit different in your wrists and you can feel a little bit more relief for those bones in the wrist. If you wanna compare, take the skeins away and feel how much more weight is dumping just into that fragile joint. So this helps to prevent or protect the wrist joint. So once we're all set up and you can move the hands forward and back as much as you need to until you find that happy place. And then inhale, lift the head, Drop the belly and exhale, tuck the tailbone and tuck the chin. Inhale, it's so good to do this with your eyes closed. Exhale, so you can really feel what's going on in your body. And as we progress through our inhalations and our exhalations, you can feel that stiffness in your spine getting worked away. Just breathe, move with your breath, and enjoy how much more pliable your spine becomes. I'll do three more, two more. Last one, I want you to hold it here with your head lifted and your belly dropped. Big deep breath in. Hold your breath, squeeze everything in. Exhale, we're gonna come into our final cat. Squeeze it in, breathe it in. Hold your breath. And then let it all go. Good. So our spines have been unleashed. Next, I want you to grab either your dryer ball or your little ball. This is a ball of sock yarn. We're going to work on some of the tightest muscles and some of the hardest muscles to reach, our piriformis. So this is tiny little muscle in your butt. There are lots of muscles in your backside, but this one is the most irritating when it gets aggravated. So we're going we're gonna to massage it out. So if you're using the dryer ball, it'll be a little more intense. If you're using your sock yarn, it'll probably be a little softer. So you choose, and you're not going to know really until you get onto this ball of yarn how sore you actually are. <laughs> so you bring this ball right under your butt cheek, and then you move around. Oof, it's sore, that's for sure. You kind of roll your muscles around on that ball until you find the most sore spot. For me, the most sore spot is right above above the bone you can you can just feel it and maybe a little bit more towards the the tailbone 
when you find that sore spot, hold it there for a few breaths, big deep breaths. These are releasing breaths. We're just breathing away that tension. You don't have to breathe out through your mouth, but I find it more effective. And then roll around and find another sore spot and do the same thing. Oh, there's one. And don't think of anything but releasing that tight sore spot. Perfect. Now, let's get a little more intense. Your ball is under your left butt cheek. Well, in my case, my left butt cheek. So I'm going to take my left leg, same leg, and I'm going to cross it over and put a little more weight. Gravity is going to put a little more weight whew, onto the muscles that are getting some stimulation. Now, this is very similar to if you ever go to get a professional massage and the massage therapist decides to get their elbows involved and they're elbowing your bum muscles. This is very similar. And it's not very pleasant. It, it probably hurts. But the rewards are tenfold. You will so appreciate this once you finish. All right. So speaking of finishing, let's get off our ball. Whew. And be very glad that that side's over. Next side. Place the ball under your bum cheek. Support yourself with your feet and your wrists, your hands, and just roll around until you can find a really sore spot. Once you've got it, breathe in and then let it go. With every exhalation, you're trying to release the muscles. Relax into it. Oh boy, are you holding? That's what that exhalation is for. Let's find the next sore spot. Don't hold. You're holding, you're just augmenting that tension. Okay, here it is. Relax and breathe it away. One more. Perfect. And then we're going to add gravity into the mix. My right leg has come up, crossing over the left leg. Roll it around until you find that sore spot. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm just going to have to pick one because there's quite a few sore spots. There we go. And breathe to relax and release. One more. Good. Let's come off of it. Well done. Look how squished that got. <laughs> all right, come on to your back. We're going to rinse it all away now. We're threading the needle. So the left leg's going to come up across over the right knee. And then you lift the right knee up until you can reach your hands behind your right thigh. <sighs> and that's where we hang out. Now, if this reach is too far for you, that's when you get a belt or a strap or a bit of a tea towel even will work. I've done that. Depends on how tight you are today, right? And every day is going to be different. So wherever you are, strap yourself in. Pull the knee towards your chest and then gently and slowly start to rock side to side. <sighs> so you're going to find some spots feel really good and some spots feel very tight still. <laughs> I got one muscle that's so tight it feels like I'm strumming. I'm plucking that string. Ow! <laughs> I'm plucking that string. But that's, uh, that's garden season for you. I'm going to be sore until probably October. <laughs> but it's all for the greater good. 
open your arms and we're going to roll the legs all the way over to the right. Now this is where your yarn may come in handy one more time. Let's say your right knee doesn't want to get all the way to the floor without your shoulder following. Well, I want your shoulder to stay on the floor. So instead, we're going to bring the floor up so that you can relax. I'm just placing this under my uh, the outside of my right knee so that you can relax into this twist. Does that make sense? You'll figure it out. I know you're smart. Use your props to bring the floor up wherever you need it to, to make those adjustments so that you can settle more comfortably into place. Take deep breaths. Massaging the organs from the inside out. Recalibrating the flow of our own life force, our prana. It all comes from breath. Beauty. One more side. I'm just going to flip around so that I can still see you. Oh, and let's see. That's going to be our right leg onto our left knee. Bring it up, thread the needle. <sighs> that feels so good. And then rock gently side to side, rinsing away tension, strumming through those tight strings. <laughs> oh, heavens, for any of you who are musicians, you're probably thinking that those tight strings are a little sharp right now. I don't try to be funny. It just happens. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's bring ourselves over to the left. Maybe using your prop to bring the floor up so that your knee can rest down and your shoulders can rest down. Just breathe. Release. Let the tension go. I'm holding on to my foot because my foot wants to slide away and I'd like to keep it where it is. One more breath. Perfect. And at this point, you can either enjoy a delicious Shavasana, like that, or you can go right back to knitting. Thank you so much for practicing with me again today. It's always lovely to spend time together. We'll see you next month. Namaste. Namaste.